and it was the third hour when they crucified him. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. But God raised him up again, putting an end to the agony of death, since it was impossible for him to be held in its power. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. God bless you, family of God. Welcome to the Blaze Bible Study with your brother, DJ Sam Rock. Um, I'm looking at the, the stream, and it looks like there's a blank screen on here. So if you're getting a blank screen, I apologize. Um, yeah, mine's is a, a white screen. I don't know what's going on here, but amen. I'm here live, and okay, I see somebody up here with me, so maybe um, it's working, just not on my end. But listen, welcome to the Blaze Bible Study. Every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I try to get here, get to the Word of God late, you know, so some this is not late this is early for but for me this this is early for me i'm nocturnal i'm like a night owl i'll be up probably to two three in the morning and then I'll, I'll try to struggle to get up to do my morning devotionals um but that's just the way i'm wired um it's crazy the way i'm wired but god is good either way um i'm glad you're here though um we're gonna get into the word we're gonna get into psalm chapter 40 what did i say 46 and we're gonna talk about this whole thing about Who's your help in a time of trouble? Who do you go to help or who's your help in a time of trouble? And who is helping you in times of trouble? I don't know if you noticed anything, but a lot of people right now are in trouble. We're in trouble. Amen. And these are basically troubling times. Troubling times are here. You know, some of us were built for trouble. Believe it or not, we're built for this. Um, a lot of people don't like trouble. A lot of people are standoffish. They don't want to get involved with anything because they don't want to stir up any kind of trouble over their lives. Some people want to just walk in peace. And I want to walk in peace too, but last time I checked, I'm in a world that is struggles in a peace area. You know, the Bible says to be at peace with all if possible. Like as many people as possible, we can be at peace with. Amen. And that's that's just how it is. You know, you could try to be at peace with everybody, but everybody doesn't want peace with you. You know, I heard it like this. No God, no peace. So if you K-N-O-W God, if you know God, you will K-N-O-W, you will know peace. But if you don't, if there's no God, N-O God, if there's no God, then there's N-O peace. You know what I mean? So it makes so much sense. If you know him, then you're going to know peace. If there is no God, then there is no peace point blank period. So it's an amazing thing if you really think about it in those terms and, and that lens. So what I like to do, I like to look at what's happening in the world, what we're going through in life. I just like to look at it through a biblical lens, through the lens of the scriptures. Amen. I already looked at stuff in the lens of the world when I wasn't saved. So I know how that works too. Uh, I know how looking at things just for, you know, give me everything. I want everything now. I want everything I can get. I can everything I get and I take what I want. If it feels good, if it smells good, if you know, I just go for it. 
live your life now don't worry about tomorrow you know live it like it was your last day i know all those mantras i know all of that i did that been there done that i got the t-shirt for it and everything and it was a lie we've been lied to by the enemy we've been lied to you know i've seen young people they go from you know graduate high school and you know they have a relationship with the lord right they go on a you know from whatever background all different um, nationalities, races, backgrounds, creeds, everything. And they're they're in love with Jesus. Then they get into college. They do two to four years. They come back and they're saying that there is no God. They're atheists now. Why? Because maybe they were challenged in certain areas in their life. And when they were asking for help, when their time of trouble, no one showed up. Or they avoided the people who were showing up. Or they didn't go to God at all. It could be any one of those things. People want justice right now. And a lot of people don't want righteous justice. They just want justice. Like they want laws to be changed. They want police reform. They want um, statues to be taken down. They want equality. They want rights. They want all of this. That's justice. And I agree. We should be in a just land in America. Home of the brave land of the free right there should be justice equality and all that but that's right here that's horizontal but what about righteousness and justice the way god wants us that now everybody falls back nobody's trying to hear that right that's way too much right sam that's way too much listen righteousness beginning with god and man amen and justice for all is possible and that's only found at the cross Jesus proved righteousness and justice at the cross. Although an innocent man was crucified for me and you, innocent man, a man without sin. He never he never got crazy with an authority. He was always poised. Um, he was tempted in all ways, just like we were tempted, yet he did not sin. He got angry, yet he did not sin. What else? Performed miracle signs and wonders. He walked on water. This man that people put charges against, laid down his life for us he didn't get murdered he laid down his life he chose to lay down his life innocent man but yet he showed us righteousness and justice for all on the cross and as a matter of fact even on that cross he said look i'm in my time of need i'm in my time of trouble but father forgive them for they do not know what they do tremendous tremendous you can't tell me the gospel is like every other story you ever heard you can't tell me that Christianity is just another religion. You can't tell me that because there's no other redemptive message. Amen. Look, what happened? Creation happened. Genesis. Then creation. Then there was a fall of man, right? Then after the fall of man, there was redemption. There had to be a redeemer that fixed the fall of man. Then after redemption, there's restoration. So we have creation. We have the fall of man. Then we have redemption. Then we have restoration. Those four things, you won't find that in any other belief system other than Christianity. Amen. There are carbon copies. There are so-called other Christian groups. Like you have the Mormons, you have Jehovah's Witness, you have, you know, Catholicism. You have all kinds of things that have similar things. Amen. Um, actually, Catholicism believes in creation, the fall of man, redemption, and restoration. But they add stuff in there in the middle or around there you know then they add some books that are out of the canon or whatever and they say that we have something already good in us and then the holy spirit comes along to help the good that's already in us and you know christians think differently think jesus we're saved by grace alone by faith alone in jesus amen Jehovah witness has their own things they say jesus is not god so therefore i don't know how they call themselves christians Mormons believe that at the end of their faith, they become our own deity, their own deity of their own planet. Um, they believe that there was a spiritual marriage uh, between God and spiritual wives and then children were born and all. That. So there's, there's differences. I know people always say, oh, it's all the same. Listen, it's not all the same. Amen. It is not all the same. Think about it. It is not all the same. It's only one God. <laughs> One Father, one Son, one Holy Spirit, three in one. There is no creation message like the gospel message. There's no fall of man like the fall of man that we see in the 
book of Genesis, and then there's a Redeemer, redemption, that's Jesus Christ, and then restoration, revelation, Lord Jesus come with the new heavens and the new earth. Think about it. What other, let's see, belief system, what other worldview is there that has that message? Think about it clearly. It's not a trick question. I'm telling you, it's true. Ledge Walker, God bless you. Welcome to the Blaze Bible Study. Brother Reuben, God bless you. Change is happening where we as Christians will be afflict, affected on our beliefs. We need to assure our hope in troubled times is in God and his word. Amen. Because pretty soon, I don't know how long, you know, I have a five-year-old. Maybe by the time she's in her 20s, they'll probably get rid of the scriptures, the Bible, right? It'll be removed from the land, probably be illegal. Amen. I don't know what's going to happen later on. So the more, I always say this, the more of the word we put inside of our hearts. Amen. I'm not, so, I'm not talking about, hey, memorize a thousand scriptures. If you can, do it. Amen. If you got that type of brain and God wired you that way to memorize a thousand scriptures, go for it, man. Uh, it's hard for me to remember my, my rhyme verses anymore. Well, the other day I, 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 was, I was stunned. I was listening to old school hip hop and I think it was a Big Daddy Kane song. And I knew all the words. That's strange, right? And that was, and that came out in the eighties. And then I try to memorize scripture and it's just a weird, don't ask me how that works. You're going to call me a sinner now, right? Cause I, cause I listen to old school rap. Amen. I listen to old school rap cause it reminds me of what I missed growing up. Amen. I really forgot what my teenage life. So I go back, remember that. Of course, I try to listen to the clean versions. Amen. Um, back in the eighties, there was not too much cursing. It was cursing, but a lot is a lot of radio versions out there that I used to, you know, listen to. As, as a matter of fact, Mr. Magic and Marley Mall, that was, you know, uh, the rap, the rap attack, I think it was called, Mr. Magic. And they used to play all the songs on the radio and they were clean. There were no curses. They would bleep out the curses and everything like that. But I, I pretty much recited the whole song. Also, uh, Special Ed, uh, I Got It Made, I was like saying the words i was like wow that's crazy i still remember those words back in the 80s what else uh you know big daddy kane rakim uh, all these songs um crooklyn dodgers um that was buckshot shorty uh master ace special ed and there was somebody else in there i think q-tip i think it was but man I, oh, oh fife dog and i was like how do i remember all these songs they came out in the 80s 90s early years ago amen because i think i put that a lot of that i was a dj so i put all of that in my mind and my heart and it comes out of my mouth and it's etched in my memory so how about when we're in times of trouble we etch this word in our memory bank so that way when we're in times of trouble we know who to go to and we know what to say out of our own mouths because it ain't gonna get sweet out here it's gonna get a lot of sour amen so in the sourness that the world's going to bring, we're going to bring our salt. And, and as dark as this world going to get, we're going to bring our light. Amen. We're the salt and we're the light of this world. Amen. Psalm 46. We're going to get into that. Amen. Wow. I keep on getting a blank screen on my phone. If, if you're having issues, let me know because my mom having issues here. It says we're live and there's a blank screen. Hey man, hopefully everybody sees what's going on over here in the studio. As a matter of fact, the whole thing is blank. So it must be a Facebook thing. Uh, I'm not gonna, you know, spiritualize this as an attack of the enemy, but um, it's kind of weird. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Amen. Some situations are going to cause pain, but they won't kill you. In Acts chapter 28, when Paul was bitten by a viper, by a snake, his hands didn't swell up, nor did he fall a fall dead. However, the Bible doesn't say that it was not painful. God never promised to protect us from the bite, but he did promise to protect us, protect us from the venom. Hello. We're going to be in trouble. Amen. I got that from Synergy Network um, World Group, I think it is. And that was the ad admin, Margie Santos. Amen. I just popped up on my feed and that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. Thank you, sister, for sharing that. I like it right now. Amen. So, People are in trouble. We're in trouble. These are times of trouble. Amen. And I'm trying to, you know, be careful how I, because my, my daughter likes to ask me, what's going on with this COVID-19? Is it ever going to end? If, uh, if the coronavirus is ever going to go away? What's going to happen with school? She starts school this year. Um, 
you know, when's the church going to reopen? When everybody can come together? When can we go to Disney World? When can we go to um, Dorney Park? When can we have friends over? And all? It's crazy. So I try to, you know, be mindful that as her leader, her first, the first man she ever met that said she was beautiful, that I said that I love her. So I'm the first man. I, I'm a representation of God to my daughter, right? So I have to be very careful how I respond. Amen. And I don't know how good I'm doing. I don't know how bad I'm. My, my wife would have checked me already if I was doing real bad. So I, I got to try more and be more intentional with my five-year-old daughter and make sure she knows that she's beautiful. She matters. She's loved. Amen. Um, that she's protected. That the world all around her is not going to believe the same thing that we believe. Amen. Our friends might not believe the same thing we believe. Amen. And I have to prepare her. Amen. As her dad. So that's an earthly position. Imagine the heavenly position of the father. How much more does he care about us? How much more is he equipping us? How much more is he sending us out there? How much more does he know that when trouble hits, that he will be there for us? He, he's telling this. He's reminding us. He's saying this. Amen. And he's doing it. Oh, good job in this world. You might not see it. You might not believe it. You might not realize it. It might be all new to you. But listen, God is a present help in our time of trouble. Amen. And it's coronavirus who showed up to rescue you. Jesus. When you felt like um, anxiety trying to attack you, who's there helping you out of that anxiety? Jesus. When you were broke and the bills were piling up and you had a, a notice on your door of eviction, and then all of a sudden money came in from people, friends, family, a check. In the, in the mailbox, who you think orchestrated and organized all of that, if you believe in God, right? Jesus. So listen, I'm going to give you a minute to share this out, because we're going to get into Psalm 46, God's word. Whether you believe it's God's word or not, this is God's word. Amen. I believe it. I read it. I apply it. Things happen. Amen. That's all I know. Listen, I'm going to give you a minute to share this out, and I'll be right back. I saw the commercial, Dunkin' Donuts. This is the, which one is this one? The Refresher Strawberry Dragon Fruit. I guess they're trying to compete with Starbucks. And to me, I don't know if you have tried it. It was funny because I was like, I saw the commercial, the, the commercial got me. Got me thinking, yeah, Refresher. So I got both flavors, the peach, passion fruit, whatever it's called. Taste that to me, it tastes like medicine. And then this right here is the refresher small strawberry dragon fruit Dunkin' Donuts. It's all right, overrated. See what happens when you get attacked by that media and those ads? You go and you think about it. I was thinking about it all day, and then I said, you know what? On my way back home, I'm gonna go try it out. And I'm disappointed. My wife tried it, she was disappointed. Um, the peach. Par the mango peach whatever it is peach passion fruit to me it tastes like i'm um sipping on robitussin on ice it's just me if you like it it's all good i'm just not a fan right now maybe my taste buds are different now psalm 46 this is to the chief musician a psalm of the sons of korah a song for alamoth this is a song check this out a song Amen. I don't know the melody of the song. 
I don't know the notes. I don't know the chords or nothing like that. The Bible says it's a song, and I believe it's a song. So here we go. And it's in its original language. It, sound, it would probably sound so beautiful. Amen. But we translate it into, into English language. So this is the translation into English from the original language, original text. God is our refuge and strength. Right there, we can live our whole life when time of troubles come. We can start right there. Memorize God is our refuge and strength. Cancer. God is my refuge and strength. Coronavirus. God is my refuge and strength. Any sickness. God is my refuge and strength. Police brutality. God is my refuge and strength. See how that works? Amen. Whatever comes our way, we're telling whatever is coming, whatever trouble. Who's who, who do we get our help from? We get our help from God is our refuge and our strength. Our refuge, we hide out, we're sheltered, we're protected, and we're strengthened by God. Speak it over your life. Listen, everybody else is speaking their thing right now. Right now, we're in the month, the Pride Month. Um, this is Juneteenth month, you know, celebrating what happened in the 1800s um, when the slavery was, all the slaves found out they were set free. Um, what else? You know, there's uh, marches, protests, prayer prayer walks. Everybody's speaking. Amen. Let's speak the word over our lives. Everybody else is speaking their thing. Let's speak God's word over our lives. God's word. So God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Very present. The days of people saying to you and to me that this scripture is outdated are over. They've been over in my mind. Because when I read a scripture like this, trouble. Let's see. Is trouble still happening in my life? Yes. Is it still happening in your life? Yes. How outdated is sickness? How outdated is trouble? How outdated is fear? How outdated is uh, love? How outdated is hatred? How outdated is racism? How outdated is this word? No, this is a now word. And it's a now song since this is a song. So a very present help in trouble. Therefore, therefore, verse two, we will not fear. And that's a great prayer walk chant for Christ followers, believers in God to just go over the streets in your neighborhoods and communities. We will not fear. We will not fear. God is my strength. God is our refuge. You could march with that. The word of God set out into the atmosphere. Are you kidding me? You know what's going to happen, right? There's going to be a revolution in your community. You do this. Do the word says. Listen, it's good. Charismatic speakers are great. Motivational speakers are great to have in your protests, in your prayer walks, in your get together, in your community events. All that is all good. The people who are going and feeding the hungry people, um, you know, they have ministries. I have, uh, I know a brother, Darian Colbert. He has cohesion. Amen. It's a, a ministry organization amen that goes and educates young women and young ladies kids all that in the communities amen he goes to communities that are forgotten the communities that need help and he brings food him and his wife yolanda amen they're doing a great work but they are inspired people they are believers in christ amen and they have a, what we call cohesion what they call cohesion network and it's a great organization they know this amen and they, they see with their own eyes the need and they meet the need. Amen. Amen. So that's what I'm talking about. Imagine. It's good to have organizations like that. It's good to have motivational speakers. It's good to have preachers, pastors, evangelists, prophets, apostles, teachers. Amen. All together speaking our, speaking out God's word. And you could listen. I know we're living in a culture that Christ is not cool. Christ is not relevant. I know Christians are, you know, the the made fun of ones, amen. But we still could speak. We still have a voice, amen. Let God's word, amen, do what God's word will do. It will accomplish, God's word will accomplish what God sets his word to accomplish, to achieve, and it shall be accomplished. God's word never turns back to him and says, okay, it's voided. God tells us to speak a word and it comes back to God and says, I'm, I'm afraid, I can't do this. No, God's word goes forth 
Amen. And we go forth and we move forth in victory. So God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled. Amen. Though the mountains shake with its swelling, Selah. That means pause and ponder about that. Think about what God is doing. Amen. Think about the wonders of God. Amen. That's where we got our, our daughter's name, by the way, Selah, from the book of Psalms. Pause and calmly ponder about what God has done. Amen. Because our daughter is a miracle. And there's more miracles coming in our lives. Amen. And in your life, too. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. Amen. You could reference Ezekiel chapter 47, 1 to 12. You could reference that, cross-reference that with this, this um, Psalm 46. Verse 5, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. Amen. The nations raised, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. Amen. You know, one look from God to our situation is all we need. One whisper of his word is all that we need. Amen. Imagine asking God all day, look my way, Lord. Can you speak to me, Lord? Can you whisper life into me, Lord, into my situations? Listen, the enemy is like, has you going, ah, you know, I can't do this. I'm, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't. And God's saying, I can ask me and I will do it. Amen. Listen, I already have this all mapped out in my mind. I have this map, this whole thing about if somebody's in trouble, amen, and it's my family and I know them or a friend or someone that is in trouble. Um, I had this thing. I don't know why, but I, I could just hear it ringing in my mind. What should I do? Have you gone to God first? Yes. Okay, now call 911 if it's an emergency, whether you need an ambulance, fire department, or police. In that order. Because I am I truly believe nothing could happen to me, nothing could happen to you, unless God allows it. And I'm talking about people who love God, who follow Christ, who know his word, who are dedicated to the body. Amen. What happens if you're outside of that? I don't know. Um, I don't know. To tell you the truth. What happens on the outside of that? I mean, we all get hit with times of trouble. We all get hit with things. Amen. But something tells me, the word says that God is my refuge and my strength. So if you don't believe in God, who is your help in your time of trouble? Amen. Now, you might say, oh, my boys or my girls or the police or the fire department or, you know, EMS if I, if I have a sickness or whatever or a doctor or whatever. Those are people that need to come to you physically you could be uh, on a highway stranded amen and you're like a uh, hundred miles away from home and you're gonna call who your parents or whatever like that how long would it take them to get there how long does it take god to get to your situation does he have to get on a bus a train a plane an automobile does he have to get on a boat to reach you or is can he instantly be with you so I'm not dumb. I kind of call upon God first in all situations. If I, you know, I had an accident years ago, I hit a deer. I swear that deer ran right into me, but I, I hit the deer. Deer flips over, breaks my windshield, flips over the hood, it flips over the roof and falls. I get out, I was like, man, my, my whole, I had a minivan, it was destroyed. And first thing I called out to, first person I called out was to God. I said, God, thank you. I looked at myself. I wasn't, I wasn't injured. That deer was all messed up and mangled. So then I'm thinking next thing to do is call the insurance. And then after that, I'll call the police to, or whoever's going to take care of this deer that's dying. So without me even calling, uh, I was on the phone with the insurance company. And I was then I was going to call 911. I, not even me calling 911. I guess somebody else called. It was at nighttime. I was on my way to get a dozen of eggs because my wife was pregnant with our daughter and she was having cravings for i think fried eggs so i was going to the 24-hour wegmans around my way and i hit a deer right so here comes the police and instead of just seeing how i was doing he ran right by me drove right by me and i guess he put the deer out of his misery didn't even ask me how i was doing and then he left i was like wow that's crazy 
So I put things in order. God first. And if I have to, um, insurance or whatever, 911 or whatever. Because I know God is is there at my time of help. It says it. <clears throat> so I believe it. He says, uh, a very present help in times of trouble. Very present. Like ASAP. He's there. Reuben says, approximately 365 times in one way or another, God tells us, in the midst of situations, circumstances, illnesses, and trouble, do not fear. Amen. Yeah, brother um, Benny t says that too. My, 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 my brother in Christ, Benny Avila, he says that too. And yeah, you guys are right, man. 365 times, that's, that's one um, do not fear for every day of the year. Amen. So I think God's trying to tell us, listen, don't be afraid. If you have me in your life, God is saying, if you have, if God is in your life, do not fear. And I know it's it's uh, uh it, it happens you you know you get this feeling in your body like wow that was scary, um the other I don't know if it was last summer or the summer before there was a plane that flew over my house, I swore that if I jumped high enough I could touch that thing I was like what's going on why is that plane so low the house was shaking and everything, and I was like God you know this this could be it you know what I mean like this plane is gonna hit something or whatever but you know do not fear. But those times of trouble come and you, you know, you get shaky sometimes. Amen. And that's a that's a normal thing. It's a normal emotion, normal feeling. Amen. We're not supposed to be ashamed. Oh man, I shook a little bit. I had I was, you know, was a little afraid. Amen. But the commandment is do not fear. So guess what? We'll snap out of it. We'll know who's our help in the present time of time of trouble. So, verse seven, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob, the God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. You can also see that in, in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 15, and Numbers chapter 14, verse 9. Come behold the works of the Lord. That's the Selah moment. Behold the works of the Lord, right? Who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. People don't believe that. Oh, well, you know, why would God allow wars? Um, you're looking for justice, right? There's a people that want to do things to hurt us. There's an enemy. The devil wants to do things to kill, steal, and destroy. So there is a war for souls every single day. It's not spirituality. This is biblical worldview for our souls. Let me ask you a question. In your time of trouble, and when the whole world was in trouble, and when Jesus came, do you think he came to save your spirit, or did he come to save your soul? Another question. Jesus, he's, he mentioned, he was talking about the people who, you know, already thought they had it together. He said he didn't come for them, he came for the sick. Right? How about this? Do you think Jesus came to make good people better? Or do you think Jesus came to give dead people life? This is a biblical worldview. These are the questions that I ask. Because I'm like, listen, Jesus did it all. Amen. And he didn't have to. That's why I love God. That's why I love the Lord. Because I know he didn't have to do it. He did it out of love. Okay. So now you think about that and you're like, wow. Did he do that for them? Yeah, he did it for me. He did it for you. He did it for all of us. For God so loved the world. Amen. So who do you go to in times of trouble? I go to God. The corniest thing in the world, right? To some people right now, they're like, oh, man, this guy. Listen, uh, I might not have it all together, but I definitely could get to the person that has it all together. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and he never disappoints. He always shows up in a time of trouble. Come, behold the works of the Lord who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease. What in the world was that? He makes worlds, wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. Uh, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I'm God. When you hear something go bump at night, Listen, I hear everything at night. That's why it's hard for me to sleep. I hear everything. I hear the clocks click, 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 click all night. 
I hear somebody coughs, somebody sneezes. I hear if a door creaks. I hear uh, if a bird flies into the windows. A bird flew into my window hard. Whether it was a bird or bat, I don't know what it was. It went boom. It flew into the window and probably died or sound. I don't know what happened. But anyway, uh, I hear everything. The dogs, when they're snoring, I, I just hear everything. When things go boom in the night, I'm still. I get up sometimes and, and look to see what's going on. Um, a couple of months back, something fell over in my garage and it smashed it was glass so i'm thinking it was the middle of the night i was groggy i got up i went to the garage door because that's where i heard the sound i literally opened the door while the alarm was on so in my mind i was like i'm protecting my home i opened the door and i said what's going on in here so i was waiting for somebody to be on the other side of that door the alarm was going off so i knew i had 40 seconds um to handle my business before the alarm goes off wakes everybody up in my house, and then the police come. I already had it planned out. And it's, it was something in my garage that was made of glass that fell over and just smashed. It sounded like somebody broke the window in my garage and came in. And here I am opening the door, ready for war. <laughs> ready. But listen, um, I was still being still because I believed in my mind, even though I was not all there, I was a little groggy because it was late in the early in the morning three in the morning something like that and um i was being still and knowing that god is with me amen so although i probably didn't have enough strength physically um to fight off whatever whoever was in the garage it could have been one two three people but with god's strength in me amen i was ready and that's the type of do not fear that god wants us to be he doesn't want it to be well, all big and bad and, you know, going up to people's faces, what you're going to do and all that. Not, not, not that kind of being boastful like that. Not, not arrogance, confidence. He wants us to be confident and know that he is with us in a time of trouble. Who do you go to in times of trouble? Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, period. That's all I had. The Blaze Bible study. Listen, let's get into the word, man. Let's get our word up. It's time. There's really not a lot of time left if you think about it. Every day I'm alive is one day closer to the end of my, to my last day. That's why we go around saying, you know, but these are the last days. It are the, it, these are the last days. Think about it. It's the last day. We're getting close to our last. Individually, we're getting close to our last day here on earth. How has God helped you during times of trouble? You rewind the tape in your mind like, wow, he's been with me in this situation, that situation. People call it karma, you know, because they don't believe in God. So they, they definitely don't believe Jesus is God. They don't believe it. They believe in karma, which means, you know, if you do good, good things will happen. If you do bad, bad things will happen sooner or later. What do you think about that? That's karma. Uh, isn't it amazing that the problem doesn't have to go away for us to experience peace. Like you might have trouble over and over again, and you might not see peace, but the peace of God will be in you. In other words, the peace, like if you have a situation going on with a group of people and like what's happening right now in America, there's going to be tension all the time. Listen, is I had to fight off some tension today um, because of some person that was a little lighter than me. If you know what I'm saying, I was in a different area. And normally a person that looks like me wouldn't be in the area, but I was about my business delivering medications and they decided to follow me a little bit up the road. So I had to focus, amen, and wait and understand what was going on and prepare what I was going to say if we had the confrontation, amen? Because I can't control their response or their reaction, but I can control mine. And definitely I was to speak word over the situation, whether they thought I was crazy or not, I was gonna speak the word over the situation and then if I had to, I'll respond if I had to say something. Nothing happened, though. They veered off and they, they went about their business. But I was already in active action mode, ready, and I was already um, inspired by God to be still and know that he's with me. Isn't it amazing that the problem doesn't have to go away for us to experience this peace? Yes, we want to be, we want everything to be resolved. Like, let's face it, I don't want no problems, no issues. Uh, you know, I don't want no be fail. Remember that word, be fail. No quiero be fail conmigo. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want no problems, no beef, right? 
I don't know who wants problems with beef. You know, nobody, I don't think nobody gets up and say, I want to like get shot at today or I want to get um, stabbed or I want, I don't think nobody wakes up that way. And if you do, and if they do, if that's you, you need prayer because you may, you might have some mental um, disorders. Um, you know, I'm not being smart at like or f trying to be funny. I just might be that way. You might be having voices in your head that's telling you that you have to be in trouble or you have to be the troublemaker. I believe that demons do exist. Demons do exist. Yes, we want to be, you know, things to be resolved. But as soon as it is, another one would take its place. So either you're in a storm now in your life, you came out of a storm, or, or you're out of a storm, get ready, there's a storm coming. It keeps on coming. Life happens, right? Though we aren't promised a problem-free life. Listen to this. We're not pro promised a problem-free free life. I know a lot of Christians are going around saying, oh, I have Jesus. We're not going to have any more problems. You're going to be blessed. You're going to live a life. Nothing's going to come to your home, according to Psalm 91, which is the word of God. But And when things do come, though, we know to speak the word. That's number one. So, But we're going to have troubles and trials. If not, then Jesus would be a liar because he promised that we would have trials and tribulations in this world. He said we know he knows we will have trials and tribulations and trouble. Though we weren't promised a problem-free life, we can trust this promise from God, this one. He will give us the power and peace to live abundantly. That's a promise. Even in the midst of adversity, even in the midst of trouble, beef, or what you call it, um, chaos, or, you know, drama. Pray with each other. We need to be praying with each other. You, this might sound basic to a lot of believers, but... How many of us do this and call up a brother or sister and pray? We'll call and talk about things, talk about that. But how many of us will just call up each other and pray? I'm guilty of this because now I'm thinking out loud. I said, wait, when's the last time I did that? I pray with my wife every day and my, my daughter every day. I pray every day. I pray with you every day. Um, but how many other brothers and sisters am I calling? Or brothers, I should be calling them brothers in, in Christ. Just to call and say, hey, man, you got time, let's pray. Then I'm going to do that tomorrow. How about that? There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I'm thinking about it now. Um, you probably thinking about it now too, right? Pray with others. There's nothing better than to join hearts and hands in prayer with other believers about the things that we are most worried about. The Bible says, do not worry, do not fear. Do not worry is a commandment as well. But how many people worry? Sometimes I worry, you know, but I have to snap out of that worry and understand that I'm breaking the commandment and I'm worrying to me this is how personally i take worry it's, it's it's like me telling god you're not enough i gotta figure this out myself because if i'm worried that means i'm not thinking that god ha is my refuge and my strength i'm not thinking that he has he has my life on you know in his hand amen so if i'm worrying too much that means i'm not relying on god that's how personal i take that god didn't mean for us to be like the lone ranger tackling problems alone amen and i'm a loner by nature i have to be careful with my loner my lonerness if that's a word i could you know i work alone you know a lot i do things alone a lot and i, I could function that way but i'm not alone and i shouldn't act like i'm alone amen when the battle is fierce or the battle is long we naturally want um others to lift us up we naturally get discouraged and we need others to like friends in Christ to pray with us. And then we need to lift each other up. Even for even their concerns, not like if I go to somebody for prayer, amen, I should get the prayer right from the brother in Christ. And I should ask, hey, do you have any concerns? If anything, I pray for you. Amen. No matter what the trouble is, this is what we're made for. Right. <clears throat> And then, <clears throat> then we would lift each other up. Even the great leader Moses needed Aaron. Well, God gave him Aaron because <laughs> Moses, God was talking to Moses through the bush and then and Moses was trying to get out of it. No, no, I stutter. No, I'm not. I can't do it, you know. So he said, all right, I'll give you Aaron then. Moses needed Aaron and her to support him and hold his arms up. Remember that story? Hold his arms up in prayer when they were in battle against the Amalekites. That's in ex Exodus chapter 17 to confirm what I'm saying. You and I need prayer partners. That's powerful. You know, 
I don't know. I think we messed up as believers. I, I hear this a lot. All we could do is pray. You ever heard that? As if that's the weakest thing or the least thing we could do. All we could do is pray. That's the first thing we should be doing is praying. That's warfare. That's spiritual warfare. That's that's getting to the commander in chief, God. And, and yeah, that's the first thing we should be doing. Not the, you know, the only thing we could do is pray. That's powerful. You know, let's rephrase. Let's put the emphasis on, oh, we prayed. Not the only thing we could do. No, we prayed. And now the only thing we could do is wait for the prayer to be answered and, act, you know, be active in ministry or, you know, is there is there immediate needs? And if somebody's time of trouble, let's meet that immediate need right now. You and I need prayer partners, a group to pray with, or sometimes a whole network of prayer. Listen, I'm blessed. My church, we have a prayer call every day, pretty much. And that morning, um, afternoon and night, English, Spanish sometimes. And listen, they got a prayer line and it's powerful. And they pray. You know, they get into prayer with other believers and that's powerful. So, and there's a lot of ministries like that. A lot of churches have these prayer lines because we know the power of prayer. Whether you're young or whether you're old or more seasoned, I should say, a Mary or a Martha, a man or a woman, God is calling all of us to pray about our families, lives, right? And what's going on in the nation right now and in the whole world, as a matter of fact. In fact, the whole world right now, we're all in trouble. Amen. You want to talk about a virus? Let's talk about sin. That's the virus that every single person on this planet is infected with, sin. There ain't going to be no vaccine for that other than the cure, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. So let, let prayer become a way of life. Amen. I know it's a way of life for me, but now that I'm thinking about it, I have to call some brothers up. and We have to just talk and pray. Amen. That's powerful, especially when the men, and you know, I'm not knocking the woman, but especially when the men get together as the priest, king, and prophet of our homes and of our communities and of our churches. Amen. When we come together and pray, uh, that's a powerful move. Amen. To put the, the enemy in check. And I can, you know, there's strongholds in every area, you know, in the world. Um, but we have the weapons of warfare that are not carnal, and our weapons are spiritual, and they bring down those strongholds right? Through the power of the Lord Jesus, through prayer and, and, and um, fasting and all that. If men come together at the priest, king, and prophet of their communities, of their homes, of their churches, get ready. Those strongholds to be will be annihilated. And then you will see a lot more fruit and a lot more saved people coming through um, the doors of the church, the doors of your house, in your family, in your community, in your, in your state, in your city, in your country. Amen. That's how it all happens through prayer. Prayer opens doors and leads the way for salvation. Prayer opens the door to the one who can save us from our fears and redeem our situation. Remember I said, this is the whole Bible in a nutshell. These four things happen in the Bible. Creation, the fall of man, redemption, and restoration. Those four things, amen, were from Genesis to Revelation. So we know that prayer opens the door to the one Jesus who can save us from our fears and redeem our situation. So as we pray consistently, this is a consistent thing. The, Paul said, pray without ceasing. We pray consistently. We'll learn that giving your concerns, giving my concerns and my burdens to God will become as a natural, as a natural thing like breathing. Amen. We'll just breathe prayers out. Amen. We'll be the, the people that let's pray about it. When my daughter gets hurt, when she falls or she trips or whatever, my wife will literally pray over. She says, where does it hurt? And she'll say, it hurts on my knee. It hurts here. And she'll put her hands on the knee or the ankle or whatever and lay hands and pray that the pain will go away. I ask my daughter what happens to that pain. Why? Because she believes and has faith that whatever her mom, whatever her dad prays for, if God hears it, my daughter's like, it's done. And the pain does go away. I'm not going to mess that all up and I'm going to try to explain that to her. I'm just going to believe that God is touching her body through the prayer and the pain goes away. She'll get up and start running around. After she's like limping, there'll be no, no more limping, no more crying, whatever. She'll go by her way. And, you know, I look at that like, that's amazing. She looks at it like, of course, I prayed to my, my dad. My mom prayed to our father in heaven. He touched my ankle, my knee or whatever, and it's healed. 
Lord, help me with that type of faith, childlike faith. As you pray consistently, you'll learn that giving your concerns and burdens to God will become as natural as breathing. So that's all I had. I hope you are blessed. Psalm 46. You know, what was the what was the question I had today? The question was, wow, this this is really something going on with this. How to win the prize. Oh, that was earlier today. See, look at this. This thing is who is helping you in times of trouble. I apologize. My screen is totally blank. I hope this is being seen. If not, praise the Lord. Somebody saw it. I know at least <laughs> Brother Ruben and Ledge saw this. You know, I don't know what's going on on my end. It's not showing up. But God bless you. God keep you. Um, if you're going to try the Dunkin' Donuts um, drinks they have, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm just drinking it because I'm thirsty. It's not good. One, I think one of them have energy. The other one, I don't know. One tastes like medicine. The other one doesn't. I don't know. But anyway, God bless you. Thanks for hanging out with me. Amen. On the bottom of the screen, if you want to support this ministry, help this ministry, help other ministries, and help other families in need, check out the website that you see below to the right. Amen. On the bottom of the screen. Also, if you're used to giving through these two ways, I have another way of giving through Cash App. Amen. Very secure way of giving um, to the ministry support. I'm speaking to those who can or are able to give. God made you a giver. Amen. He gave you abundance and finances and all that stuff. And he just made you that way. I'm talking to those people. So excuse me if you think I'm, you know, asking um, everybody. I'm specifically speaking to those who have a giving heart. Amen. Uh, to give to the ministry. And thank you so much for everyone who's been supporting this ministry. Listen, um, I can't say unless people allow me to say how I blessed them and how I was able to give to this ministry, to this family to a need, amen, because of the support, support that I'm receiving, I'm able to give, amen. Freely I was giving, freely I give away, amen. So that's how that works, and God God is good. He's been allowing me to do some things that normally I would not be able to do um, without support from my brothers and sisters in the kingdom of God, amen. Our economy is the greatest economy. The, the, king, the God kingdom of God economy is greater than the world's economy, amen. And also through my PayPal right there, um, so that's all I have. Listen, God bless you. God keep you. Pray for me that I get a good night's sleep or rest or whatever so I could get up and we could do the uh, morning Devo tomorrow morning. Amen. 10 a.m. The podcast will be up again very soon. Amen. I have to convert a lot of messages into podcast audio only. Amen. And I'll be doing that probably within the next two weeks. You'll see like 10, 12, maybe a whole month worth of podcasting going up. Amen. I don't want to abandon my podcast listeners. I apologize to all my TuneIn app listeners, to my Spreaker listeners, um, to my um, Apple podcast listeners, um, to my uh, so many, um, so many apps that I'm on. I don't remember all of them. Stitcher app, amen, um, to my YouTube as well. Who else? You know, so many podcast networks we're on. Apologize for the delay that I have a lot of ministry in the back burner, amen, that's going on with some audio and visual stuff. But I'm going to get back to the podcasting because I love to podcast. Uh, I struggle to be on the screen a lot, amen, believe it or not. I like to be a voice and an audio stream better than a, than a, a voice and an image on the screen. So God bless you. God keep you. Remember always that God is good. Until the next time, peace. And let God be your strength. Let him be your refuge. Let him be your fortress. Remember, God is your refuge and your strength, and he's a very present help in your time of trouble. God bless. I'm out. Peace. Blazing Bible studies.